The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Jess Navarez in the host seat for Miss Nicole today, who is not with us. We will miss her today. But you know what? I will keep the puns at uh, we full spirit <laughs> just for her. We beg. I know. <laughs> Chris ain't typically our producer. He don't want to do Chris Beam in the back? <laughs> Chris? Chris is going to love the puns. No, I just he's know not. He's going to. <laughs> he is. He's going to love it. Don't you worry. Ladies, how are you doing this morning? Awesome. And thanks to Nicole. Nicole's actually doing character playbook today. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. why she's not doing this. So she's with Jalen Brooks and Katie Anna from the Cowboys cheerleaders. So we appreciate her doing that. But yep. we'll miss her. But thanks for doing this, yeah. Jess. Yeah, hosting. Of course. Of course, of course. I just uh, hope you guys can really brace yourselves for the puns that I have pre-made yeah, I uh, mean, for this episode. I think I would have been better today if, you know, I could do things when I left the house with my phone. There was some self-service? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to state the obvious. Yeah, there are yeah. phone, uh, cell phone outages throughout North Texas and other parts of the state and region, I believe. But they'll, get, they'll get it settled, so yeah. we'll be yeah, all right. It's, it's you know, ironically, we were going to try to open up the phone lines for you guys today. Uh, we probably won't do that. Maybe we'll push that to next week. So something okay. to look forward to. Okay. Uh, for a whole week, you guys can, like, sit there and be like, I can call into Girls Talk, Boys Talk next week. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Speaking of a whole week, it has passed by, and uh, we said that we would keep you guys updated on the latest coaching hires uh, in this new Mike Zimmer era uh, that we're seeing here uh, at the Star. And so some new hires, I want to go over them one by one, kind of go over what we know about them and discuss it. So let's get into it, starting with uh, Jeff Zanina. He comes from the Commanders as a defensive line coach. He is now the Cowboys' new defensive line coach, replacing Aiden Dirty, as we know, uh, who went to Seattle as their new D.C. Chris, you had some insight uh, about Jeff as a former player, uh, also a former coach. What do you know about him? Well, 17 years in the NFL. So when you take him and then I know we're going to talk more about Greg Ellis in just a moment. But Greg Ellis, a former Cowboy first round uh, pick from 1998, is well, he's he's never left Dallas. He's been here ever <laughs> since his uh, playing career ended. But um, Jeff and Greg. And coaching the defensive line this year, Greg is the assistant defensive line coach to Jeff. That's 31 years of NFL playing experience that uh, they'll be able to share with the Cowboys defensive linemen. So in addition to uh, Aiden Dirty going to Seattle, uh, Sheree Floyd uh, left and went with uh, Dan Quinn, to uh, the Washington commander. So um the, so the defensive line, it's a two-part change there. But, um, yeah, Jeff most recently had been with the uh, commanders. So he had uh, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, mm-hmm. had um, – uh, Sweat and Chase Young before they got traded away the middle of last year. So he certainly has the bona fides, right, mm-hmm. uh, from a playing career and coaching uh, standpoint. Aisha, I want to ask you, because you're obviously the film expertise uh, of this show. I want to ask you, how valuable is it to have a former player come in mm-hmm. and be a coach? What kind of value does that really bring to not just the guy in their respective rooms, but just overall to, in this case, the defense? No, it's actually, it's. I actually wrote it down. I said hiring I former players is a yes for me. <laughs> um, and I actually, last year this time at the Combine, when I was at the Combine, I was able to talk to some coaches, talk to some scouts, talk to, and even at the Shrine Bowl. And um, quite a few of the scouts that I talked to even at the Shrine Bowl this year expressed to me that there is a dynamic that is happening in football right now that these a lot of former players are being hired to these rosters and things and it is valuable because I I liken it to you know me my one of my cousins is an electrician I I have some some training in that from the military just a very tiny bit but who I mean the fact that he's done it he's mm-hmm. experienced it he's like it's different it, it is different and yeah. I don't it, it's not to take away from any of the coaches who never played the game or never been involved but when you can look across the hall at someone that's 
has the same battle scars as you, that's really felt what it's like to be a player, I think that it matters. And I, I like the trend of this happening more in the NFL. It's exciting. And I do think that it, it's a way, it's another way for players to see that there's life for them after mm. oh. the NFL. Th that, but oh, but also, that. the you know, I mentioned the longevity of the career, 17 right. years and 14 years. Yes, ma'am. But Jeff and Greg came in totally different ways. Greg, number one draft pick. He was number eight overall in the draft, yes. okay? Well, uh, Jeff was a seventh-round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers who – and then ends up playing 17 years in the NFL. Right. What a story that is. Yeah. And he was only with the Steelers for two years and then kind of bounced around to several different teams. But that's a lot of longevity. And so it, it's different. When you have guys coming in um, who – the rookie free agents or the long shot guys, you know, he can relate to them and have some empathy. That was something that um, Jason Garrett, his time mm. here, Kellen Moore, yep. um, you know, e even now with uh, with Scott and with, uh, oh, gosh, all the guys that have uh, Doug Nussmeyer, who was the yeah. quarterback's coach here. They know what it's like to knock around. They know what it's like to be the backup guy and to have to prepare those mm. backup guys and, and be ready. Uh, and so, um, you know, it, it's coming at it from different perspectives. I also like that, too, because you, you talk about having empathy. You you have these coaches that understand the pressure of being a Dallas Cowboy, mm. which is so much different. Uh, as we've talked about so many times in the show, it's different than being just an NFL player because you're already ha under that microscope and then you're under an even tinier microscope when you have the star on your helmet. Um, so having a coach that can kind of relate to that uh, I think is also super important. You mentioned Greg Ellis uh, also hired as an assistant defensive line coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Christy, you brought up having some memories, uh, obviously, <laughs> with Greg. I would love to know what is your favorite memory you have of Greg as a player and what kind of flavor do you think he's going to bring into this D-line room as a coach? Well, I think the thing about D-line is we, um, especially when you think about pass rushers, things are a little more hybrid, right? And like, Michael, you have these edge rushers mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, like linebackers stand up end. When Greg was here, he came in and it was a 4-3. And so he was a starting defensive end. And so uh, he came in when it was uh, Chan Gailey. And then after that, it was... Um, uh, Dave Campo and then Bill Parcells. Well, a couple of years into Bill Parcells' tenure, Bill wanted to go from the 4-3 to the 3-4. Uh, we talked last yep. week or two weeks ago about Zimmer uh, making that uh, transition. Well, Greg got moved from defensive end to uh, outside linebacker. And so, you know, I think that with that kind of hybrid kind of thing, you know, he can kind of relate to that or maybe has some uh, background in that type of thing because everything's not just a 4-3 or 3-4 anymore. You have all these kind of uh, hybrid types of things. But my favorite memory of Greg is uh, it's a road trip. It's Christmas night in Nashville. And we had a either Monday night or, yeah, it was a Monday night game on Christmas night. And so we flew out on Christmas Eve on mm -hmm. the team plane. And uh, the late John Weber, a beloved um, uh, leader of uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the North Texas area and the longtime chaplain for the Cowboys, came down the aisle on the team plane. And normally it's just the players and coaches that do chapel or mass, uh, which is voluntary but provided for uh, – those guys, uh, John came down the aisle and said, hey, it's Christmas Eve. Please come to service tonight. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going to the service and we were all um, stood in a circle for the prayer to begin. Randall Cunningham was the backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. He led the prayer and I was standing between our two starting defensive ends, Greg Ellis and Ebenezer Ekubon, as we held hands and uh, said the prayer. Of course, they're like six foot six. And here's <laughs> little me. I you know, I looked, I looked like the little uh, toddler that got, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, taken to class uh, holding hands. But, but, that's, <laughs> but that, that's what I remember is is uh, holding hands for our Christmas Eve uh, chapel service. Very sweet, very sweet. I want to keep this train rolling. Um, there's a couple more hires. Paul Gunther, another one, as the team's defense defense's run game coordinator, which I know this was a big hire everybody was really waiting for, given the issues with the, the run defense, right? And, and not just this last season, but in seasons prior. That's been a kryptonite, if you will, of the Cowboys' defense.
sense. And so uh, getting somebody who can come in and patch that up and really specialize in that, obviously, uh, key here. Um, when looking at his background, he's worked with Washington, uh, the Bengals for quite a stint, the Raiders, the Vikings, and then, of course, now with the Cowboys. Looking into his background, what I thought was very interesting is uh, he's worked with defensive backs, linebackers. Um, he's been a defensive coordinator. But also, he's worked within special teams units as well. So I think that versatility of having that in a coach that also uh, knows the, I guess, importance of that aspect of the game as well, even though that's not his perspective or his retrospective room, it's so important. Um, so excited to see uh, what he can do there. Yeah, as well. and, and also when you uh, mentioned the uh, Bengals and the Vikings, the important part about that is 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 Zimmer. He worked with Coach Zimmer. Yes. So, yep. uh, in fact, after uh, Zimmer um, left the Bengals, uh, Paul took over as the defensive coordinator, and then he also uh, coordinated for um, the Raiders. But uh, And then Mike Zimmer's final year in Minnesota, he hired Paul again to come in uh, as a defensive assistant. So uh, I think that that familiarity, that working together, I think that's going to be uh, very key. Yeah, um, from my understanding, he's uh, considered to be a bit of a linebacker savant. And uh, Ooh, I like that word. Guess guess who needs that? Guess who needs these linebackers to take a step in the the right direction? Um, and even in regard to Greg Ellis, you mentioned Zimmer. Um, I listened to uh, a podcast. It was called Sports Spectrum. It was on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, Greg Ellis was just on there talking about mm -hmm. what he wants to be. And he said he wants to be a combination of Mac Brown, Parcells, and Zimmer. <laughs> and he mentioned that uh, he mentioned the attention to detail with with Zimmer, mm -hmm. obviously, and he mentioned how important competition is. But he also mentioned um, coaching coaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and coaching, mm -hmm. you know, continuing to uh, improve there and hopefully they're able to improve the players. And I just thought that was important because we, yeah. we talk about development and things like that. It, development doesn't stop for coaching either, you right. know. And so for them to kind of have that, I think, will be healthy for the team as well. So um, I'm excited about the Greg Ellis hire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thrilled because I thought you made a really good point about the fact that he – no was he really truly knows what it's like because it yeah. is a different ball game it's a different lifestyle um so i i'm greg ellis coming in is is important to me at third time sack leader for the cowboys oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he was a great player their yeah. third all time i mean this guy knows what it takes you know to win and how to play this game but as far as uh, as far as paul gunther i it's really a i couldn't find a whole whole bunch about him in that way but he is familiar with Zimmer like you said and also too I'm talking about scheme and, right. and things mm -hmm. like that but uh the the linebackers everyone that I kind of got cl caught glimpses of from an interview standpoint yeah. and stuff like that some of the articles I caught linebackers really where he uh excels mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be healthy for this team in particular yeah. Qu question how big a deal was it this past season to not have George Edwards. I think it was a bigger deal than people know. Huh? What'd you say, Christy? <laughs> say it louder. Say it louder. <laughs> but I... Look. No, no, I mean, it's... Yeah. It, it was he, something he, that... It, you know, it's that veteran experience. Yeah. It's working with backers. It's it's uh, familiarity with other guys, you know, on this the staff. And so... Um, under the radar, for sure. Yeah, I think so mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, uh -huh. good yep. point. Um, the last one that we have is Steve Sh Shimoko. Shimko. 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 Mm -hmm. Shimko. Why can I not get that? <laughs> it's okay. Right? I spelled Guys. the wrong at first. You know, my, my <laughs> autocorrect is uh, autocorrecting over here on my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, an offensive assistant. And Aisha was very excited about this one because yeah. my girl has her connections, she has her insights. <laughs> What did you dig up exclusively for Girls Talk Boys Talk about uh, this new hire? Yes, um, so Steve Shimko, um, he was the Boston College offensive coordinator. Um, he's been doing that for quite a while. Well, for quite a while, he was an offensive assistant um, while he was there. Well, actually, no, it's the other way around, right? Yeah, the past two years he was coordinator. Yes, in so, Boston but he's going to be the offensive mm -hmm. assistant yeah. here. Uh -huh. assistant yeah. right. here. Mm -hmm. um, and he's replacing uh, Will, is it Herring here? Yeah, he, yes. and so Will left for Carolina, so he's going to coach Bryce Young and be the quarterbacks coach for the Panthers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it, fun. Mm -hmm. Bryce needs it, so go go ahead and do that thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's 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 filling in here, um, but I 
was immediately like excited about the fact that he came from Boston College because I had the opportunity to interview a uh, guard Christian Mahogany from Boston College uh, really excelled at the Shrine Bowl um, he's gonna be rising up some people's boards in the draft so I reached out to him because I was like I, who better to tell me about this gentleman this coach than someone that's been coached under him and he said he really helped me a lot he was uh, he's in he's intense um, but he's he's going to get the best out of the players from a run game perspective. And that made my ears light up because when I looked at Boston College's numbers, I mean, they averaged 4.72 yards per rush this year um, on 547 rushers, rushes. They had 2,584 total yards on the ground. They ranked 13, 13th in the FBS, which is so impressive because they were at the lower tier uh, mm. to start the year and until he came in and, and really made their offensive line this mauling, can take over a game, mm -hmm. can really punish people. People know that Boston College has put out some good players as oh, yeah. of late. Hey, he has a lot to do with that. Love and from that. me, you know, I even posted on Mick Twitter. I was like, listen, yep, all this did. defensive coordinator stuff is nice, but baby... Can you run the ball? Yeah. You, you, you know how you yep. make your defense better? You keep them on the sideline yep. and you run the ball and don't place. let the other team's offense on the field. Very Time important. Of possession and battle. I'm and I'm sure, yeah, and I'm sure <laughs> that is what, seeing what he was able to do with that offensive line is something that intrigued the yep. Cowboys <laughs> to bring him in. So The number of runs that you mentioned for Insane. Boston College, I think Insane. that in this, this spread kind of pass heavy, there are some teams that yep. probably haven't had that many runs in two seasons and or three. What, that's yes. something that Christian mentioned to me. <laughs> yeah. He said, um, "He said, yeah, that's that was our strength. We leaned on it, mm -hmm. and it was different. I'm sure it's just like it, it was different in the NFL when you saw teams do that. It probably is the same in college yeah, because, sure. to your point, Christy, it's more spread, more heavy right. pass, more. But when a team's just like, you know what?" going to run the ball down your throat today yeah yeah it's it's a difficult counter because of the hybrids and yeah. the tweeners and stuff that you well and, so. and think of where they're playing boston college and up yeah. it's cold and Real it's cold. hard to run the, to the other thing the is so um most of steve's background or that we're talking about is college mm -hmm. but he was a couple years in seattle with the seahawks with yes. brian schottenheimer yeah uh, yes so again it goes guy. back to familiarity and you know uh it for the coordinators they you delegate right? right you have to delegate and so you have to have that it's just any business coaching or corporate world or you know if you're in a principal or assistant principal in a school too, you know you've got to be able to delegate and have trust in the people or familiarity yeah um you know when you can hand off the uh, duties and just know that it's going to get done the way that you want to get it done yeah, I also think Mike McCarthy does a really good job of allowing his coordinators Absolutely. to delegate and do their job and not overstepping um, what what some head coaches might, right? And, yes. And uh, I, I think that's a credit to Mike there as well. But you mentioned the run game. Mm -hmm. Well, tag, you're it. Franchise tag time. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we're talking all about the franchise tag. Uh, some important dates to keep in mind. We're going to talk about uh, some prices to keep in mind. Price is right, is it not? You'll find out. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's Girls Talk, Boys Talk. We'll be right back. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled to perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby. The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys.
Welcome back to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We're talking all about the franchise tag, but first, Kenny Chesney is bringing his Son Goes Down 2024 tour with Zach Brown Band and special guest Megan Morney and Uncle Cracker to AT&T Stadium on May 11th. Tickets are now on sale at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. 10 out of 10 would recommend if you have not seen Chenny, oh, Kenny Chesney to go do so. That's a party. So fun. Yeah. What's, so and fun. Zach Brown Band. What's it, a, so good. Yes. What's the song of his? The Boys of Fall. The boys it's literally of fall. about football. It's, yeah, it's about football. Sang it. The boys of fall. It's kind of a sl- da, da, da. slower one. Because oh, he, he's, he's normally da, da, da. kind of a yeah. party guy. It's like a lot of people think Kenny Chesney is going to take over kind of the he's party like, kind of thing for, for Jimmy Buffett, the late Jimmy right, Buffett. And so right, right. Kenny Chesney like will fill that void. And just kind of fun, and just you're on a beach fun. vibe. Okay. All right. Well, and Zach Brown got my toes in the sand. That's another one. There you go. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, you can head to SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium, if you want more info okay. there. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of the boys of fall, uh, <laughs> oh, the look official at that. season. Oh, Jess. Uh, thank you very much. The official season. Uh, well, I guess the official 2024 season kind of starts over uh, mm-hmm. with this franchise tag date that is coming up this week let's talk about what a franchise tag is first um again we do the show for anybody who wants to learn about football who already knows about football we can all use a little refresher Mm -hmm. um so teams can begin that literally this week Mm -hmm. uh so this is a designation that a team may apply to a player scheduled to become an unrestricted that's a key free agent the tag binds the player to the team for a year if certain conditions are met each team has one franchise tag and one transition tag per year okay so um this can start february 21st through 4 p.m eastern time on march 7th tag players then have until july 15th to negotiate and compete and uh negotiate for a multi-year contract extension wow i don't know what i was typing when i wrote this um yeah once that date passes um Pretty much you have then, then to <laughs> get on, play on that tag at the set price uh, for a one-year contract. And there's that. So, obviously, last year we know that Tony Pollard was on the franchise tag. He was uh, your franchise tag guy, now a uh, free agent, technically. So, Christy, I wanted to go over first with you, and then Aisha will, will bounce back to you. Let's talk about that because a lot of the discussion here is do the Cowboys even use this franchise tag this year because a team can opt not to use it. Exactly. To do so. Exactly. In fact, the franchise tag started in the league in 1993, but the Cowboys didn't use it for the first time uh, until 2002 with Flozell Adams, mm. and they've used it 11 times in their history. So since 1993, the Cowboys have used it only 11 times. You mentioned Tony Pollard last year. Yep. Uh, the two previous years before that, they used it on Dak Prescott. Uh, Demarcus Schultz. Lawrence had it. Uh, back-to-back uh, yeah. seasons and uh, it, there are pros and cons the pros are for the owners in the league what it does is it right. keeps the top 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 free agents possibly off the market mm. okay mm-hmm. so uh, and and the pros are you get once you're tagged if you decide as a player I'm tagged and if I sign it and you don't have to sign it but if you sign it you are guaranteed a certain amount of money so a franch if you are franchise tagged your salary it's going to be a base salary there's not going to be bonuses it's a one-year deal base salary guaranteed it's the average of the top five salaries at that position in the nfl so the franchise tag for a quarterback in 2024 36.3 million dollars because we know quarterbacks are paid the most, and mm-hmm. so that's the average uh, for t- of the top five for 2024. The second highest paid position, linebacker. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of cases, not really traditional linebacker. You know, think of the linebackers who are pass rushers, right? right? So that's uh, $22.7 million. A defensive tackle, surprisingly, is third overall, uh, $20.9 million. You go all the way down to special teams, uh, like a kicker and a punter, that would be uh, $5.7 million. So um, the Cowboys, uh, I don't expect them to use it this year, but Aisha, I know that that, uh, uh, you're very aware that players 
really hate the franchise tag. Yeah. <laughs> why why would they hate the franchise tag? Cuz they don't do nothing good for them. It's mm -hmm. this game everything's like another game's not promised. You know what I'm saying? And and that's yeah. one thing that I think a lot of players fear is you injury happens things happen and when you sacrifice how you do to take care of your family and stuff now in some instances it can be i i remember when tony pollard got his franchise tag i'm sure it's not ideal but what the running back market was last off season yeah, yeah worked in his favor yeah. he it worked in his favor in that regard so sometimes you have those but you know, like we like we talked about, I just I think that a lot of players are looking for longevity. Yeah. They're looking for stability. And I mean, you on a one year contract, basically, that's a tough world to be in. And you're mm -hmm. betting on yourself and you're betting on staying healthy. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you're kept off the market. It's mis you are kept off the yeah. market. You, you don't get to go limited. out and, yeah. and sell yeah. your wares yeah. to to uh, other teams. But Jess, I think one of the th key things about the franchise tag is uh, once you're tagged, you're it. Uh, you, you can you're it <laughs> and you can sign it. You have until mid-July yeah. to sign it. And to come up with a contract extension. So basically yep. what an NFL team is saying, tag your it. I basically have you under control until yep. July. And you sign it. It's your one-year deal. It's yep. guaranteed base salary, average of the top five. But we have until mid-July to work out a long-term deal. And that is most often what happens. Right. Yeah. So it didn't happen for Tony Pollard last year, but it happened for Dak Prescott. It mm -hmm. happened for uh, Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, I have some notes here. It also happened um, Des Bryant. Um, mm, he was tagged. That. He yeah. was tagged. He wasn't. This is back in 2015. He was oh tagged. God. He didn't like it at all. Yep. He skipped the offseason workouts. But then uh, Dez and the Jones yep. family came up with a long term deal five years, $70 million. Yeah. So uh, that was the July 15th deadline. They beat it uh, that year. And uh, Ken Hamlin, some longtime Cowboy fans remember uh, Ken Hamlin, the safety, and he had signed a um, $39 million deal uh, right. back. Uh, when he was tagged in 2008. So uh, certainly uh, Demarcus Lawrence, when he got that $105 million extension, mm -hmm. yeah. that was a deal uh, that was done uh, before the deadline. It was the second uh, year that he had been tagged. So let's look at the Cowboys free agents, uh, unrestricted free agents, I should say, because that's a key part of this. Yes. And I'm going to go through them. Um, and let's say you have to pick one to possibly give this franchise tag to, okay? You have to pick one. Uh, and again, we, we already discussed that it's most likely the Cowboys don't use it. But if they had to pick one, let's uh, play with that scenario here. You have Tyron Smith, Tony Pollard, Stephon Gilmore, Dorrance Armstrong, J. Ron Curse, Jordan Lewis, Dante Fowler, Noah Igbenogany, Jonathan Hankins, Trent Sag, Chuma Idoga, Neville Gallimore, and Tyler Biotish. Ladies, Aisha, I'm going to turn to you. Who gets your tag and why? Can you say Any? the list again? Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Unless you, you also, think of the free agents. Well, but you also have to keep again. in mind the possible hits on the salary cap. So uh, I'm going to pull up the prices once you have your person, and we're going to see what kind of hit that takes on the salary cap. Okay. Considering all else the contracts that need to be addressed in the off season mm -hmm. and the hit that that could take on the salary cap based on whatever position um you pick for your player okay Christy, do you have your guy i'm not tagging anybody because i think that i can She's get I, I can get each of these guys if i want to yeah. resign them it's going to be less okay. than the tag right um because remember the tag is uh, and you. there's also the it's franchise the tag and the transition tag so a franchise tag uh means that I own control. Nobody else can make a deal or like that. It, it's done. A transition tag, it's possible that they can still uh, make a deal with another team. And if they do, then I get two first-round draft picks from that team. Mm -hmm. So they hardly – I don't know – I can't remember anybody that's moved happen. off the transition tag. No, but, but the transition tag is less than um, – uh, the franchise tag so you're saving some money but I don't even think that I'd use the transition tag on any of my guys okay Aisha yeah, I I was well I was asking because I was feeling the same way as I mean if you do if you get the 
quarterback extended, you're going to be able to do a lot more um, mm-hmm. from a financial standpoint. I, I wouldn't be comfortable using it. I mean, I can't sit up here and say I don't want. I don't like the franchise tag, so I'm not going to sit up sure. here and act like I want it to happen to anybody. Um, I, what was the tag for? What's the average who, who, for who you think for the cornerback? You thinking for Gilmore or Lewis for a, a cornerback? It's eighteen point seven million dollars. You can get both those guys for less. Yeah. You, you could combine yeah, probably those guys. It's too much. And get, but I, I think that the the key is to look around the league mm-hmm. and think of these key free agents. Obviously, someone who's going to get franchised. They are good players right. who are important to that team. Mm-hmm. And so um, you look at the defensive tackles that yeah. are under consideration. I would love to have Je- uh, Mata- uh, Matabike, f- Justin, mm-hmm. from um, Baltimore. But he's probably going to get um, franchise tagged. Christian Wilkins mm-hmm. going free from agent, the— Free agent, right? Yeah. So y- y- what you're doing is you're keeping your top players out of free agency— yeah. By tagging them. So Chris Jones with Kansas City, if they don't do a long term deal, they could, you know, they have until March 5th to, to tag him. Yeah. Um, uh, Matt Abike, Christian Wilkins, um, you know, in if you look at, uh, oh, edge rushers. Brian Burns for Carolina. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, Josh Allen, not the quarterback for Buffalo, <laughs> but the um, pass rushing linebacker for I Jacksonville, 17 and yeah. a half sacks. It, so if they if Jacksonville can't work out a long term deal and they want to uh, tag um, Josh Allen or Carolina, Brian Burns, one of the top young players in the league, only 25 years old. Oh my gosh, he'd look so good with a star on his helmet. <laughs> but it's gonna it's gonna cost uh, 22.7 million dollars. Mm. So what happens when? I mean, not to sound redundant, but yeah, can a player refuse? You cannot sign it. You can say, I am not yeah. signing it. That's what happened with Le'Veon Bell for yeah. Pittsburgh. He says, I'm not playing for this. So you don't sign it. And guess what? You don't play that year because your rights are controlled for that season by, by the that team. Tag. Yeah. Now the team could the team could cut you. Yeah. But then <laughs> but you're not gonna do that because then they'll go play for somebody right. else. So you, you have the choice. So you're, you so have the choice. As a front office, you play it would or you make don't more play. sense to basically just hold that contract so that way they can't. That's play why for that they year. do it. Yeah. That's why they do yeah. it. It's That's, really a bad deal for players. I know players. the reality of it is sitting in, and I'm just yeah. not going to comment. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, but, but, it is, but it is, I think, you know what's so interesting is going back to last year when this was a conversation, I mm-hmm. think it was pretty predictable that Tony Pollard was going to get mm-hmm. that tag. But you look at it now, and really the, the list of free agents, um, because that's obviously a key part of this, like you guys mentioned already and i also don't want to sound redundant but a lot of these guys you can get for cheaper deals than the value of the tag but also how many of these guys and and you know this could be a conversation for next week as well were actually impact players <sighs> talk about it oh oh for the cowboys for the cowboys yeah. this, gilmore this last gilmore season. and lewis I don't want to lose them, sure. but I, I don't I'm want to lose them at all. I, list, I, I, I want them back, but not yeah, for $18.8 million right. per season. But you could also do a long-term deal, sure. cut that cap Absolutely. Hit, and then Abs- abso- you, everybody absolutely. gets their way, right? Yeah, but, for sure. Um, I think the first domino effect, and you mentioned this last week, is you need to kind of prioritize Dak Prescott's contract sure. first and then let everything else fall. So, yeah, it's going to make it so much easier. Um, yeah. <laughs> It would is. not uh, love to have the job as uh, that in the Cowboys. Well, 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 you know, D- Dak was hard. franchised back-to-back years. So yeah. he played the first year on the tag and then the second year uh, signed the, the deal. And um, uh, when he was tagged in 2021, it, the uh, franchise tag amount, $37.7 million. But uh, before the deadline in July, you know, during the offseason, earlier in the offseason, he signed the four-year $160 million deal. All right. Well, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the combine a little bit. We got some questions on Twitter we can get to as well. Uh, So stick around. We'll be right back. This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. 
Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Welcome back to Girls Talk Voice Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Don't forget to gear up for all of your spring break plans with Dallas Cowboys Essentials. Score travel accessories, swimwear, hats, and more at the Pro Shop near you or shop online at shop.dallascowboys.com. A fanatics experience. It sounds fun uh, for anybody who has some spring break plans. Sounds like a good time. Um, Don't have those, so wouldn't know. But (laughs) for anybody that does happy for you and you should go get your cowboys gear <laughs> um all right scouting combine it begins next week on tuesday actually uh aisha you got to go for the first time last year uh christy i'm sure you've gone plenty uh throughout your career have only you? once oh there you go combine well, is you know that's once more than me so if that's... <laughs> <laughs> um but the the really mm-hmm. cool thing about this is you really get to start to see all the draft boards come together things start to really form and that's your bread and butter uh when it comes to draft season so aisha i want to talk about the combine a little bit with you how does this help you see kind of what value different players can have for certain teams with what they do at the combine i mean so one thing that's really important at the combine that i found it's very valuable and i'm sure other i'm sure the scouts and stuff found it valuable is the interviewing and to really Mm -hmm. get in those one-on-one times with some of these players and seeing how they are handling, you know, everything that's going on. I, I, I don't, I can't stress this enough how hard that the combine is for the players Mm -hmm. and how stressful of an environment it is for them, because it's almost like it's the whole world watching you. And it's one of the few times you're an individual in this sport and that you have to perform as an individual. And I when I was there, I just empathized so much for them in those moments. But it also, too, it's it shows you their preparation, because Mm -hmm. the thing about the combine is a lot of guys can score well in the combine and then they may not be good players. Mm. It does take skill and preparation and time and things. And then the health protocols come out, which is huge. When I say (laughs) the make or break, it's. What they go through examination-wise is some of the most extensive stuff Mm -hmm. uh, that they might see in their career, to be honest. It's it's very in-depth, and to your point, it does start putting clarity to some players. There's some some guys that you're like, oh, he can play. Like, there's a gentleman, uh, Peyton Wilson, right now, a linebacker, and he's fantastic, but he has some injury stuff, and people mm. are a little worried. Is he going to be able to bounce back? Is he going to be – is he – he looked fantastic at the Senior Bowl, right. but – for these guys, it's also checking boxes. Sure. It's checking boxes. You get the senior bowl, you get the shrine bowl. They get all they get these few opportunities to just get someone's attention. Yep. Um and so it it's um I don't know, it's it's really something to to be there and to feel the energy of the room. Um I, I for the players in particular, I I, I really empath- I empathize, but I understand there's going to be guys that rise to the moment as well. And, and it does separate some of the gentlemen as well. So it's it's a it's a dope thing. I, I love the combine. Um, and I can't wait to see the results after so we can start. This really will put clarity to our draft boards. And yep. you're like, oh, okay, he has this health thing. They might make him slide. You'll start 
being able to start paying painting things out better after this yeah and, and it's invitation only so this year 321 mm -hmm. players and uh, uh, some of those didn't come until after these uh, senior bowls right. and, you mm -hmm. know that shrine bowl that you mentioned but I'm so glad that you mentioned the health part of it because it's really a three-part thing it's the underwear Olympics out there doing the drills on the football Please. field right <laughs> uh, but and then it's the mental part yeah. of uh, the interviews with the team and it's basically speed dating okay right but the third component in that medical component is crucial because the team send not only scouts coaches general manager owners in some uh, cases mm -hmm. like cowboys but the medical team and i think the best recent example for the cowboys is damone clark yep. with the that's dr cooper yep. dan cooper the cowboys had the uh, team orthopedist and uh, head of the uh, doctors um, that do the games and are at training camp and uh, he's the one that found the net condition for Damone Clark so um, it, it can be make or, or break not just from the medical standpoint but you can talk your way onto a team you can talk your way off of a oh, team too goodness. yes because mm -hmm. they do the they that that was something that i was new to even last year um, when we were covering the combine is you start hearing guys like they talk about the big board and the big board yeah. is where they they tell a player like okay what are you supposed to do in this situation what what's your job in this coverage mm -hmm. how do you respond to this happening at the line of scrimmage and if a player can't do that sometimes it does knock on them you know it knocks on some of uh some of the way scouts look at them so it's a like i said it this is a this is a high stress environment oh, yeah. and yeah. it puts a lot of pressure on these guys to uh perform also to uh peyton wilson out of uh north carolina state at North Carolina State. But the, the one thing from the league perspective, and I think why we all, so many people watch it and enjoy it on NFL Network, ESPN, it's one-stop shopping. Yeah. But before Tex Schramm and Gil Brandt and the Dallas Cowboys, before they, before Tex went to the competition committee and proposed a centralized one, 1982 was the first centralized draft as wow. we know it. Hmm. Before that, certainly you would have the teams, you know, they would invite players for individual workouts or they would go to campuses or send scouts and stuff um, but um, until 1982 there was not a centralized mm. thing you have That's maybe you've heard of, of Blesto before that it was Lesto and uh, huh. what is it Quanta all these different ones where you had groups gr before 1982 <clears throat> yeah you you had some groups of, of teams that would uh, combine together yeah. for scouting um, and then after that uh, just to cut costs, basically, right. right? Right. But it still wasn't one-stop shopping for all of the teams uh, at one time, but uh, the way that it's set up now. And then the first year that it was uh, actually uh, broadcast and became so um, uh, popular, NFL Network, uh, let's see. Gosh, this is their 19th combine that NFL Network is doing. And so actually wow. tonight... Um, no, next Tuesday is when uh, they'll have the um, defensive line and linebackers, and then Friday will be defensive backs and tight ends, <laughs> and then quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs on I March 2nd, <laughs> and then the offensive line on March 3rd. It's, it's nothing like seeing know. those defensive linemen get out there and run at 40. <laughs> Ain't nothing but, like it. But you know what? Some of them are really fast. Oh, now they're say. athletic. Like, yeah, yeah they now, have they're, to be. now yeah. they're running, like, they have full to be. sprints. I'm... I'm so ready for it. I'm so ready, y'all. Well, you know what I'm ready for is uh, next week we can talk all about it because it's yes. on Tuesday. So we can kind of come back and reconvene. But before mm -hmm. we go, uh, we got a couple questions on Twitter. And I always put this out. And sometimes we just don't have time to get to the questions. I don't want to do that to y'all today. Uh, so I'm going to ask you one question. I'm going to ask you one question. And then that's how we'll do it. Let's keep it short and sweet because technically we only have a minute left. Okay. J Tuck, our guy J Tuck, shout out to J Tuck. We love J Tuck. Uh, asked on Twitter, what type of players should we be looking at in free agency slash draft to fit Coach Zimmer's defense? Aisha, shoot. Whether it's a DT or a linebacker, I think you should be looking for someone that has command in the huddle. I think you should be uh, looking for someone that is hair on fire, high motor, very active, and uh, communication skills. 
leadership skills, those things. I'm definitely hoping for a player on the interior of this defense that has been there before, maybe has some experience, but also too walks it like he talks it. I think it'll Oof. be important moving forward. Yeah, agreed. Man, concise, agreed. Love it. short to love the it. I love that. Christy, your question comes from Michael. Any cool stories of running into retired Cowboys at the star? Oh, geez, all the time, <laughs> once or twice a week, even in the off season. Yeah. Um, f- favorite thing I did last year was with Emmett. Emmett and C.D. Lamb, and it was for our sponsor, UPS. I remember that. And it yep. was Shark Tank. It was it, it's kind of like a Shark Tank, but it was UPS, yeah. and it was delivery yeah, yeah. in a box. Mm-hmm. And so we um, we chose uh, winners of local businesses, and they uh, basically put their goods in a box in their presentation. And so, but uh, Darren Woodson works works in the building, yeah. and that's the great time. thing about yeah, this job is we we uh, we run into former players all the time, and uh, absolutely love that part of it. Very, very cool. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Our time has come to an end today. We'll be back same time, same place next Thursday. Uh, we'll have the Combine to talk about. Whatever news comes up, we'll make sure to talk about. Uh, thank you, Christy. Thank you, Ayesha. Thank you, Chris, in the back uh, for manning the show today, if you will. We couldn't do it without you, so we appreciate you. We appreciate everybody who watches. Thanks so much. This has been Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see you next week. Have Bye, a good Nicole. One. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!